the Gulf of Mexico, I think it's pretty typical everywhere, at least in, in coastal environments, is that when you get a good, you know, well-established bloom of jellyfish and they start accumulating in these aggregations close to shore, you know, it depends a little bit on the species, but if we're flying over on an airplane, you can go the entire coastline and see repeated, you know, just pink aggregation after aggregation of, uh, you know, just thick jellyfish. So they can go for miles and miles, you know, a hundred miles long. In the thickest patch, it's, there's more jellyfish than there is water. So, you know, you can, you know, as many jellyfish as you can squeeze into a cubic meter, that's, that's what the density is. So it's easily in the 50 to 100 animals in a cubic meter of, of water when they're at their thickest. Here in our waters, we've got anything from old bridge rubble. When a bridge is taken down, they'll take the bridge out and dump it. Or we sink whole ships. That recently, they sunk an aircraft carrier off of Pensacola. We have fields of, of World War II era army tanks. And it used to be that pretty much anybody could take anything they wanted. As long as they made sure it was, and had it permitted, that it was drained of oil and gas or anything else that might leak into the environment. But they could take anything out and put it into a specific area. So it's this, this haven for fish, but we've done this without really appreciating what we might have done to the environment in terms of bringing in habitat for things that otherwise wouldn't be there. So within this community of things that otherwise might not be there might be whole suites of jellyfish polyps and, and, and other things that, that otherwise wouldn't have a home to, to reside. So these blooms are not really oddities, but what happens when you start adding more nutrients or you start removing too many fish or you start adding too much structure in the ocean or you do all these things or, or even you know, increasing the, the temperature of the water. You do all these little things, each one by themselves, seems to be able to, to nudge jellyfish to being more abundant. You add all of them together, and they'll do a very good job of, of bringing jellyfish numbers up. And so we can see that jellies are, are kind of sitting on this threshold of, of ecosystems that if ecosystems are you know, healthy, then jellies will sort of do their normal thing. They'll go about, they'll make blooms, they'll go about you know, their, their happy jellyfish lives. But if you nudge the system towards the more perturbed side, the jellyfish will take off. And so, so we do sort of think of jellies as being that, you know, that kind of canary, that, that bellwether of, of change. 